stop the FOMO, everyone. We are very excited, always excited to be at CES 2025 because we talk about the latest technologies that impact consumer TVs, displays, monitors. And then we have the holy grail of that technology, micro LED. And today I have a CEO of a smaller micro LED company who appears to be ready to make an impact. So yeah, I'm Ian Jenks. I'm the CEO at SmartChem. SmartChem, all right. So SmartChem, we make a new generation of uh, polymer semiconductors. Okay. So think plastic electronics. Okay. And uh, I loved your blog about the death of the micro LED, the not to uh, say very long ago. And, and it's because it's expensive, it not is. because it's not awesome. It is horribly expensive. And you're absolutely right, because it is awesome. And so micro LED is going to happen. And you're absolutely right. The problem is still too expensive. And hey, friends, want to upgrade to Windows 11 Pro, but can't afford the official price of $199? How about $21 or Windows 10? for $16 with my discount code SF20. Thanks to our sponsor, Hookies. Yes, Black Friday is here. Get an additional 30% off with my code SF20. Go to hookies.com, add Windows 11 Pro to your cart, apply my discount code SF20, and bam, only $21. Here's how we activate it. Go to your Hookies account at the top right under User Center, click on My Purchased Orders, click on View Keys and Code, Click Get the Key. Copy the Windows 11 Pro Key under Code Card. Then go to your system settings, scroll down, and click Activation. Click Change Product Key. Paste the key code. Click Next, and you're done. So don't miss out on these amazing deals. Click on my links in the video description below. If you think about it, you know, everyone started in micro LEDs in exactly the wrong place. Okay. They picked the hardest problem, yep. which is the smallest micro LEDs. Uh, they decided that because they were small and because they're made on wafers, hey, the answer is wafer scale processing. You know, and we're going to drive down that semiconductor curve, you know, twice the performance, half the cost every two years. That's, that's how they've been doing it for decades. Abs well, the semiconductor industry, yes, the, the display industry. industry, of course, hasn't. And it's been the semiconductor people who have preached that uh, philosophy. And and actually, it's just not true. There is no photonic equivalent of the transistor. Okay. Micro LEDs are simply made from wafers. It right. just happens that the easiest way to make them is on a wafer and you chop them all up and then you've got a material. Mm -hmm. So if you start by thinking about the problem differently, so instead of taking you know, all displays, big sheet of transistors, that drive something that glows red, green, and blue at the front, every display. So if you start with a sheet of transistors, and then you go, I'm now going to take my micro LEDs, you know, all 25 million on them, of them on a 40-inch TV, and I'm going to try and place them all over it, and then I'm going to laser weld them all together, you know, you're doomed to failure. You can't separate out the different manufacturing steps and figure out where the yield is, because you can't switch on a micro LED until you've got to the end of the process. Right. What's the number one rule of making things? Don't add value to scrap. Yeah. And it's because of the value, adding value to scrap, that you see the micro LED TVs that are out there today you know, made up of tiny little tiles like this. And we looked at the problem differently. We literally turned it upside down. I'm, I'm getting excited now. So instead of saying, Let's start with a back plane. Let's put a micro LED on the top of it, mm -hmm. then test it all, throw away what doesn't work. We said, well, let's start with a micro LED. Okay. Let's put those down the other way up okay. on a piece of sticky. So sheet of sticky. Okay. Uh, and now you have a sheet of sticky, light coming out the bottom, contacts at the top. And the challenge is, how do you now take a transistor and connect it to right, those things? Right. So what we then do is we've developed some unique polymers. So we spread a very thin layer of polymer over the top of all of these micro LEDs. Okay. And then we photo pattern little holes in our photo patternable polymer okay. down to all of the connections. Okay. So now our alignment's no longer mechanical. It's using standard industry large scale photolithography. Right. So you now. Now you have a series of micro LEDs, a series of little holes that go down to all of the connectors. Now you sputter a layer of metal on the top of it. Okay. And now all of your connections have been made 
by sputtering metal into those holes. And so now you've got a grid of connections to all of the micro LEDs. Okay. There's not a transistor anywhere near them yet. Right. You can now light them all up. You can test them. You can develop the yield processes. And you've connected them not with laser welding, which has major yield issues in any case, but by just using standard uh, silicon okay. processing methods. So, it's, it's moving from mechanical to photolithography. So now at this stage, you know, one, your RGBs are working, they're lighting up. Yep. Uh, are, they have all the connections ready to go. Yep. Now at this point, are you done and you deliver it to the supplier to continue or do you continue to add more? Certainly not. Okay. We, uh, we have, then you get to the really sexy bit. Oh, I thought that was sexy already. Okay. That's, then you have the problem of now, I've still got to connect all of these connected micro LEDs to a backplane. And so if you take an existing backplane and you put this sheet against each other, you're back to another high yield, you know, low yielding problem uh, where you hit them all with lasers in order to try and solder them all together. Uh, so we have a completely different approach. We're still upside down, and we now build up separate layers of polymer electronics. Well, well think screen printing, but you know, so it's uh, slot die coating, spin coating, photolithography, and so we build up four or five layers of different polymers. And, and this, I assume, would be your your magic sauce. The that's path. absolutely. That's the hundred million dollars we've invested say, in uh, in sauce. developing really cool polymer uh, electronics. Okay, so the question is, in, in the stack of the micro LED production process, uh, you know, if it costs, let's say, to make it easier, round number, 100,000 to produce a certain wafer, how much money did you save now? So, so your approach is saving what percentage in cost to get that? So we're, we're, we're a public company, so I've got to be very careful about what I say. Oh, oh, but I think oh, we can move from, we can move from the $100,000 uh, micro LED TVs of today okay. uh, to something that is, that competes with uh, OLED at the high end. Right here, my new best friend. You hear that? Yeah. So OLED at the high end, let's say 83 inch OLED, which is yeah. the new size. Everyone loves yeah. 83 inch even. Yeah. Yeah. One day QD OLED, but if Ian gets his way, forget QD OLED, forget the four layer cake that Brian loves so much. We might have a micro LED 83 inch OLED, and right now they're going about $6,000 and yeah. SRP around there. Yeah. So you're saying under $10,000 for approximately an 83 inch. I think so. One day. We've been told the, the prediction, right? I, yeah. I have friends in DSCC, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and the prediction continues to be eight years out, around there, seven to eight years out. Every time I talk to him, he goes, yeah, we're going to add another year to that. Because as yeah, you said, absolutely. That, that, that picking and placing is not working out with the yields. So if you were to predict how many years out, are we still eight years out, but this time it will happen, or are you accelerating this I kind think, of timeline? I think we absolutely accelerate the timeline. Okay. And we do that because we separate out the fundamental manufacturing steps and you can address the yield okay. at each stage of the process. Now, as a person who's very attuned to these sort of startups, you have a few approaches, right? You have yeah. your licensing of the technology yeah. and you license it to major tooling companies. You help them make the yeah. tools or are you creating the actual tools and selling it as well? Like wh what is your so, business model with this technology? Um, we are a, a brown bottle company. Brown bottle. So not white label, brown bottle. Yeah, brown bottle. We sell brown bottles of polymers. We create the polymer ingredients. We define the um, electronic data automation tools that allow people to design the You're transistors. using existing circuits. tools. And, and what about the actual manufacturing tools? The actual ma manufacturing tools are exactly the same tools that you use for making amorphous silicon so. today. So fortunately, um, in Taiwan, there's an organization called ITRI. All right, okay, so you found a partner in Taiwan now. Yeah, ITRI is the gold standard for transistors. So we're building with them, we're qualifying right now. We signed a contract 18 months ago. It's coming up to process qualification during happily this quarter. So let's say it passes qualification, meaning everything works yeah. Yeah. to their satisfaction yeah. for full scale production. If everything goes as expected, yeah. hoped, by CES next year, will you have a working product that you can say? I think we'll have some demonstrations by CES next year of micro LED uh, displays. That would lead us to 
affordable TVs at the price of a flagship OLED TV yeah, today. I think so. Okay, we, well, let's do this. So we need to follow this up at yeah. CES 2026. We absolutely will. And, and, I, will, and I want to hear, I will produce I will produce something for you to look at. You'll go, wow. Efficiency, I'm assuming the efficiency is very high. Current micro LEDs, the TVs get very hot. Yes, And it do. actually gets so hot that it, it melts the plastic casing around the circuits, which yep. as much as they promise is capable of 5,000 nits, it's realistically not capable of 5,000 nits. Hey, and it's, it's capable of 300,000 nits. Right, but then everything else know? is going to melt. And then, and then, and, and then, you, <laughs> then you, you heat Las Vegas. And fundamentally, if you use our approach, the light comes out of one side of the display and the electronics is on the other side. Of so the you're separating display. the heat a bit better, We're right? Separating the the heat. heat. Instead of having to wrap electronics round and have the light and the electronics on the same side, you can now have a much better approach so, you know, to cooling things. This is the kind of stuff that we love to hear when CES. It's the startups that have a huge impact on the industry with innovative production processes, solving problems that the big boys cannot solve. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. A pleasure. Until next time, stop the FOMO. In this case, once again, I cannot stop the FOMO. This is something we're not going to miss out on. <laughs> <laughs>